Brother lads, welcome back to Costa Snow Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to a brand new video. It's time for us to talk about some Arsenal transfers. I've been sick for some time and a lot has happened around the club. Beads, um, interest from very crazy goalkeepers and a lot is going on around Arsenal. So hit the like button, subscribe to the podcast as well. Let's dive into some of the latest transfers around Arsenal Football Club. Some of the best moves that are happening on the market. Now, there is no question we are winning the transfer window uh, as things stand. We have spent more money than Manchester United and any other club on the market. And it looks like Arsenal is still looking to spend more money on a new goalkeeper and some other positions as well. Which other players do you want? Which other positions do you think Arsenal should spend uh, money on before we enter the new season? We are only two weeks away uh, from Arsenal launching their title charge so we are only two weeks away from Arsenal starting their big campaign which other positions do you think Arsenal needs to occupy before the transfer window closes let me know in the comment box below let's get this video to 500 likes now I think the big story uh, has, you know, today in the last maybe 48 72 hours has been Arsenal and the goalkeeping situation first and foremost Arsenal have received a 10 million bid uh, from Nottingham Forest to sign goalkeeper uh, you know goalkeeper Matt Sana. that bid has been confirmed however there is still evaluation difference between the two clubs and that bid has been rejected so what is happening here is that Nottingham Forest believe they want to sign at least one more goalkeeper before the transfer window closes, before the wind, uh, before the season starts. They're looking at Dean Anderson from Manchester United. They're looking at, at Matt Turner at Arsenal as well. They're looking at Dean Anderson because they signed him uh, last summer and he actually did very, very well for them before he actually picked up an injury. But then they're also looking at Matt Turner as one of the good goalkeepers in the Premier League who's not actually playing as many minutes as um, you'd, he would have expected or you would have expected uh, for Arsenal. Now, Martin is 29, so he's got that kind of experience that um, Nottingham Forest would definitely want in a goalkeeper. He's a very good ball-playing goal, uh, goalkeeper and one of those goalkeepers that are really good when it comes to saving penalties. So they're looking at him and they're looking at him signing for Arsenal in January. So they probably believe he's not going to be very expensive and they also believe he's going is not going to cost a lot of money as compared to uh Dean Anderson and Arsenal are also willing to sell so the first thing Arsenal did is to tell Nottingham Forest that we would be willing to sell if we can give us anything north of 15 million pounds the problem I have with Steel is that Arsenal overvaluing uh, the player I think we've, we signed him for around seven uh, or maybe you know five or seven million euros uh, right in January if, if you're getting around 12 million, around 13 million, and we are really serious about selling, in my opinion, that is the right price. That is when you've got to sell. But of course, Arsenal trying to negotiate at least a fee above 15 million euros. Now, that has actually triggered a lot of changes in the food chain when it comes to uh, the Arsenal goalkeeping hierarchy. Arsenal will need a backup goalkeeper if we lose our second goalkeeper. If we lose our second, then we will sign a new goalkeeper. The transfer rumor meal has drawn and has brought us closer to David Dreyer at Brentford, with, with Brentford very open to selling. So, in the last 72 hours, Brentford have received a couple of offers. Actually, throughout the, this whole summer, uh, Brentford have received a couple of offers uh, for the young goalkeeper. And they've already decided that they will sell. Actually, uh, their, their manager, Thomas Frank, was asked about the situation. And he said, uh, we will sell. If the right offer comes in, we will sell. And the player actually uh, wants to get that big move. He wants to go. He wants to get that um, uh, big opportunity. And we won't stand in his way. We will actually sell him. Today, Bayern, uh, Bayern Munich have actually sent in their offer uh, to sign the player. However, that offer has been turned down and talks have also uh, broken off. So the reason why is Bayern are trying to sign him on a loan deal, potentially, um, and then they can buy him later. Brentford are not listening to that. They're saying he's one of their most valuable assets. And if anyone wants to sign him, if anyone wants to take him at the club, uh, away from the club, they've got to pay uh, money up front. They've got to agree a permanent deal up front. Uh, I think Mikel Arteta... 
is a huge fan of David Dreyer. Way back in 2020, Arsenal made a couple of bids for David Dreyer. They were turned down and Arsenal eventually walked away. We never wanted to overpay. We never wanted to pay um, above what we thought was the real market value uh, for, the player, for the player then. Now, he was available since day one and Arsenal could have signed him since day one. The reason as to why Arsenal have not gone to sign David Dreyer before is... There's so many clubs that have been interested. Man United, Chelsea, Tottenham. Um, I mean, to mention but a few, including Bayern Munich. So, Arsenal never wanted to involve themselves in that bidding war. We never wanted to be closer to a bidding war. Because, one, we have a very, very good number one in Aaron Ramsdale. But also, if you enter a bidding war with um, uh, uh, Brent, sorry, with, 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 with Tottenham, Bayern and Man United or, and Chelsea. All these are clubs that were desperate to sign a goalkeeper. So literally because Brentford looked at Spurs, they looked at Man United and Chelsea and their situation and Bayern and you know, they decided the price is going to be high. So what Asma have done here, which is actually kind of ingenious, is we have waited for all the clubs to fail to agree a deal for David Dreyer, which means that the, that because the players told Brentford, I don't want to stay, I don't want to extend a new a, a deal with you, I don't want to sign a new deal, so the price is going to come down a little bit. He's got one year on his deal. I think it's kind of unfair for them to ask for in excess of 30 million euros. For me, the highest price should be around 25 million euros. That is what Arsenal should pay uh, for, David, for David Dreyer, the highest price. So, because all these other clubs are now out of the way um, and Brentford have just shot themselves in the foot and, and, and have said, we are selling. We will sell. Uh, we've agreed to sell internally. So we are just waiting for that right amount of money. So for me, 20 to 25 million euros will get the deal done. Arsenal have just waited for everyone to get out of the way. Uh, if Brentford don't... Now, Brentford, no. If they don't agree a deal probably with Arsenal or probably with any other club, then he will work for free in the summer, next summer. They don't want that. They want to get some good money, sign a new goalkeeper, and then move on with life. So let's wait and see where the, this one is going to end. Uh, but at least we, uh, what, I, what we know is that... Um, ex Brentford goalkeeping coach Inaki Kana is trying to sign David Dreyer for Arsenal and he's a goalkeeper that is really decent. Mikelat has eyed him for quite some time and he's a goalkeeper that is actually topping many other goalkeepers, not only Ramsdale, but many other goalkeepers in the Premier League when it comes to a couple of metrics. That is passes attempted, long passes attempted, short passes attempted as well, um, and his save ratio and percentage is also very, very high for a, uh, for a goalkeeper who's actually only 25 to 30 million euros, uh, if you come to think about it. So, Brentford have a decision to make. They've already decided they will sell. They've just not yet decided how much they will sell for and what amount of compromise they're going to be coming with on the tab of personally i'll be there i'll be there to report about each and everything that happens on this deal now away from the goalkeeping madness which is actually uh surrounding arsenal we've been linked with axel disasi uh, chelsea have apparently agreed a deal to sign monaco center back axel disasi for 39 million pounds and he was really wanted by arsenal now I did report about Axel Disaster before, and I said uh, there was some, there was this kind of interest reported that um, Arsenal were really interested in Axel Disaster. Personally, I never felt that we were really interested in Axel Disaster. I've never felt that Disaster was um, an Arsenal target. If I was wrong, probably. But I've looked at the profile of centre-backs we've signed this summer. I've looked at the centre-backs that Eric Ten Hag has wanted at Manchester United. The profile, the, the profile is very similar between what Arsenal wanted and what Manchester United wanted. United were never serious on Dizazi. I don't think Arsenal were really serious um, on Axel Dizazi. But he's now going to go to, to Chelsea. Let's wait and see how um, he's going to turn out. If he turns out to be a very good player, then I would definitely say we should have signed him. But if he turns out to be good, but not in the profile or calibre or range uh, of the talent of 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 Jill and Timber, then definitely 
he was never Arsenal bound. Okay, so he's gonna go to Chelsea. Axel Izzazi, that is also done. Arsenal have failed to get that one done. Sacha Tavaleri, one of the leading Belgian journalists, has also broken the, uh, the deadlock um, and the seal on the story of Albert Sambilakonga. He says Albert Sambilakonga is on his way to Burnley. Arsenal and um, Burnley are in talks to get the deal done with uh, Burnley looking to sign him on loan initially with an option to buy. So uh, company and, uh, and Lokonga have worked together before in, uh, in Belgium. And there is that close relationship, right? There, he will feel a little bit at home. He will feel a little bit better, uh, you know, at, at you know, better at Burnley under Vincent Company than at Arsenal under uh, Mikel Arteta. I really do feel for Lokonga because at Arsenal right now, it is tough. It is absolutely tough for you to to, to become a starter. It is absolutely tough for you to become um, a star at Arsenal right now. So you think about players like Oleksandr Zichenko, who gives you what exactly Lukonga would give you. You think about players like Jakub Kivio, who have come in and they're going to replace Lukonga directly. The role that Lukonga plays uh, can be played by Timba, Kivio, and Zichenko. Uh, there is no way... He's going to come back in this Arsenal side. There was no way uh, Albert Samuel Okonga was going to come back in this Arsenal side. I, I initially thought about go him going out on loan and then coming back stronger and a little bit switched on. But I think he's a more of a Crystal Palace player, more of a Burnley player. So he's not this kind of player that um, has this potential to play for Liverpool, Chelsea, Man City, Arsenal. But he will definitely settle in in that mid-table range. So I won't be surprised if Burnley survive and Lokonga was a key player for them. I won't be surprised if Burnley have a good season and Albert Samuel Lokonga turns out to be their Iwobi. Remember Iwobi? Arsenal sold Iwobi for 35 million. And he's done wonders at Everton. He's done very well for them last campaign. But those performances don't elevate him to the status where Arsenal are like, hmm... We made a mistake to sell you. So we are comfortable with the decision we made to sell Alex Iwobi. But still, he's doing very well with um, uh, with Everton. So I think Lokonga is in that bracket. He will go on to do very well at Burnley. He'll go on to do very well for a, a mid-table Premier League side. Probably um, a mid-table Italian Serie A side. But he's not an Arsenal player. And the ruthlessness that Mikel Arte has actually um, exhibited... In the squad right now, pushing out players, you know, you know, ghosting some players that are actually not giving us enough. Lokonga looks at all, uh, looks at the bigger picture, and he's like, "There is no place for me in this Arsenal team. There is no place for someone like me in this Arsenal team." If Fabio Vieira and Emil Smith Rowe are struggling to get into this team, there is no place for me in the team. And um, I kind of feel for him because he's one of those players that signed for us at a time where we could use any kind of help we needed, right? So Lokonga offered help, Pate offered help, Tavares, but now the team has outgrown them. The team has Rice, Pate, Jujino in midfield, Kai Havers, Odegaard, Fabio Vieira, and Demil smith Rowe. So that quality does not guarantee um, Lokonga to come back at any point in time and play any role at Arsenal. So according to Sacha Tavaleri, Burnley will take him on loan, which, is, which, which I think is actually a very, very good deal uh, for Arsenal. So they will take him on loan with an option to buy. So he's got to work as hard as he can to impress at Burnley. Look, bro, if he fails to impress at Burnley, if he fails to give them uh, the best of his, you know, his efforts, then the Premier League is not his, um, is not his home. He's going to be looking at the championship, going back to Belgium, or finding life, or, you know, trying life outside the Premier League. So for me, uh, this is kind of his last opportunity. I don't see him coming back to, uh, back at Arsenal, but he's one of those deals where Arsenal can get some 20, 25 million euros um, off his cell. So let's wait and see what's going to come out of that. Uh, Arsenal still progressing. 
in talks with Muhammad Kudus uh, just because of the flu, so I'm struggling to pronounce some words. But um, Muhammad Kudus is a deal that Arsenal have been working on, working on for all this week. Let's hope this one is going to be good. Yeah, let's hope this one is going to come good. But um, we are progressing in talks to sign Mohamed Kudus. Arsenal should place their initial bid as quickly as possible. And of course, we have that Bitello bid, that, that Bitello deal that is um, slowly progressing. Every single day, we get a confirmation. Every single day, we get uh, some good news that, you know, Arsenal progressing. But we are still there. With the Florian Balogun, uh, Man United after signing Rasmus Holland, looks like United will be... Um, dealing with other de things apart from uh, uh, Balogun. So we're still waiting for Italian clubs to come in and give us some good money. Edin Ketia is one of the players that Crystal Palace want to bid on in the coming week. So losing Eddie and Balogun can't happen. We have to keep one. We have to sell one. If we, had, if, if we decide that the stock of Balogun is one we need to cash in on, then definitely but if we need we feel that balagan needs to stay then cash in on eddie right so in terms of transfers that is where we are i won't be doing the transfer roundup because you can see you can hear the voice it is it is madness it is destroyed but of course tomorrow i'll do a transfer roundup if i'm feeling much better and we'll be predicting what will happen throughout the week as Arsenal try to sign fourth and fifth signing of the summer